Today, I want to talk about a phenomenon. I just wrote about it in my newsletter um, about what happens when we know that our child's upset. They came back from a, a, a play, playing with a friend next door and they're scowling, or it looks like they've been crying or are near tears. Um, and we ask them what's wrong and they say nothing, right? Many, many parents know about this. They know what it's like to want to help your kids to ask the innocent question based on what appearances <laughs> are telling you, which is that something's wrong in your child's world, but they won't open up. You get the slam door. Um, maybe they scowl at you. They get, they kind of unleash their anger onto you because you are the safest place to do that. And, um, you know, it comes from a place of love. It comes from a place of concern. We want to be there for our children. We want to help our children. But, you know, sometimes we go about it in a way or we have gone about it in a way that leads them to feel it's a bad idea to tell us the truth about what's happening. And I just want to touch on this a little bit just to kind of give you some food for thought and maybe raise your awareness the next time you see your child having a hard time it starts with knowing ourselves and everything in my work is really about that. I know a lot of people have said, well, what do I say when X, Y, or Z happens? Can you just give me the script? And there are scripts that I offer. I have a membership program where we go deep into this stuff. And sometimes I will actually do some coaching and say, these are the words that I might use. However, the, the most interesting thing to me and the reason I do my membership program and the reason I like to work more deeply with parents than just here's the here are the words first of all it doesn't work there's no one size fits all sentence that you can say when a certain thing happens because every one of us is unique and our, our children are unique in the relationship we have with them but also there's a lot that goes on between the lines so you might say the words that you heard are really great words to say when your child's upset and get a terrible outcome right and why is that? It's because there was so much more that was being conveyed or that's going on in the relationship or that the child has experienced with you in the past. So that's why it's really valuable to me to get underneath and to look at where we're coming from first, because where we're coming from is always conveyed or communicated to the child. We might like to think differently. Um, I just had a conversation, in fact, with my son, you know, and, and we just know each other so well. And we were talking about how hard it is to keep something hidden, even if we have good intentions and we don't want to bring something up because there's an openness there. There's an, a, an honesty in that relationship. And, and so our children do pick up things. They may not be able to language it, but if they sense that we're having a hard day or that we're really worried about their popularity, and that if they then come home from school and say, nobody played with me, that it's gonna activate something inside of us. Like, oh no, my child's being rejected as I was. And so the, whether they can articulate it or not, our children often protect us from the truth of their lives because they sense that our reaction is going to be a difficult one and may even load up and burden them more with something that they feel obligated now to make okay in their life so that we're okay. And you know, you've often, if you've followed my work, you know that I, I strongly believe that children understand intuitively that it is not their job to make us feel better. It's a hard one for us to get because we often say, you really hurt my feelings or I was just trying to help or why are you so mean to me or I, you know, we can't help it and we're human and there's nothing wrong with being honest and letting your children know that you have feelings and that sometimes they stomp on them, <laughs> but it's not their job. It's not their job to make us feel that we're okay or that we're loved or all those things. And, and, you know, this is a, a path I've had to walk personally. It's, it's deep stuff because we can't help but bring to our parenting lives what we experienced as children in our own lives or what we experienced with our parent, what the, what the conditions were for love. So I know that I'm going off on some tangents that may be a little you know, beyond what you were hoping to hear. So let me come back to some practical ideas. Um, but for those of you interested, please, please look into other things that I do. 
So the child says, nothing's wrong. Stop bothering me. I'm fine. The first thing that we want to look at in ourselves is our reaction because we're going to communicate it. Can you be in a place, as hard as this might be, of being okay with your child's distress? Not that you're seeking it out, not that you want them to be unhappy, but can you work with yourself to understand that in the larger context of growing up, there are going to be and have to be times when your children bump up against difficulties. This is how they grow. This is how we grow. So if you could shift your mindset around seeing your child unhappy or worried or, or rejected as not just a horrible thing that you want to rush in and give advice about or fix, but as a necessary part of their growing up experience, then when you respond and say, okay, sweetheart, well, I'm here if there's something you want to bounce off me, or if you need a sounding board, or if I can offer support. Right away, the child has gotten a message, not that you're frantic to fix their problem, but that you're able to stay present through it, beside them, helping them make sense of what's going on, and then eventually perhaps come up with a strategy. But what we do, and I call it act two parenting, is we rush in with the solutions, the fixes, because we're so unhappy about their unhappiness. And it creates this uh, experience for the child that it's not safe to turn to us. Because a lot of times when a child's upset and they're over, sort of picture them, even though this is somewhat simplistic, they're over in their right emotional brain. They're distressed, they're unhappy, they're sad, they're confused, they're hurt, they're angry. These are emotional states right? They're states of dysregulation. And when we try and fix them by appealing to their left, logical, language-based, rational brain with advice, with suggestion, with insights, they can't process it in that moment. That might come later. First, we have to just bring them, help them, almost lo loan them our regulated state so that they come into a more regulated, calm, rational state where eventually they might be able to strategize with us or benefit from our words of wisdom, but not in the heat of the moment. In the heat of the moment, we want to first check in with ourselves. Oh my gosh, I'm, this is hard. My child's unhappy. The neighbor, you know, they just came home from next door and that little guy next door, maybe he or she said something awful to my child. My child's so sensitive and maybe we're feeling it. So you stay present. Oh gosh, this is hard. This is hard. I want my child to be happy and loved and liked, and they're so wonderful. And why doesn't everyone see that? So you acknowledge it, you stay present with it. Maybe you put your hand on your heart, just or on your face, just to help regulate yourself, or you give yourself a little hug. And then you say, sweetheart, you know, if there's something that happened next door, if there's something you want to talk about or you just want to cuddle, I'm here. And, that, and you're communicating this feeling of safety. And most of us, if we know that it's safe and we don't have to take care of the other person's emotions or feelings about our distress, they will open up. And our kids will test us. So this is a path, it's not a one-time thing, but you know what we can sometimes even acknowledge is, you know, sometimes in the past, honey, when you've been upset, I've probably rushed in to give you advice you didn't want yet. Is that true? Yeah, all the time. Well, I'm sorry for that. And I really want to work on that. And if you'll give me a chance, I'm going to really do my best to just listen. If that's what you need or just make you a cup of, <clears throat> of hot chocolate or tea and we can sit and, you know, play a game together if you'd rather do that, not talk about it. But you're, you're creating this whole blanket of, safety of you're cushioning the fall for your child. So I hope those are some things that you might find valuable to think about, to ponder, to um, consider the next time your child is pretty obviously upset and you want to offer your support, just to slow things down a little bit, try some of the things I've suggested. So before we wrap up, I'm just going to invite you to take a moment and think about one or two things that I said that you want to try in the next week. Maybe you want to slow down and check in with yourself and see what old feeling is getting stirred up by your child's distress. Maybe you want to just observe yourself and notice that your heart rate is going up or you're getting all worried or the thoughts in your head are, oh no, not this. Maybe your heart is hurting. 
it's just breaking a little bit because you know that your child longs to have, you know, good friends and it seems like it's been difficult. Whatever it is, just to slow down. Maybe you want to try that in the week ahead. Maybe you want to just try practicing some of the things, the ideas of things that you could say. You know, it looks like you might be having a hard time, or I wonder if, if there's anything you want to talk about. I'm here. Or even you may consider trying acknowledging, you know what, in the past, I think I've kind of rushed in with advice before you wanted it. And I want to say, I'm sorry for that. If you want to give me another chance, I'm here. So lots to think so, about. Again, stay in touch, hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified of the, the, when we release our next episode. And do stay in touch. You can get regular doses of parenting support and inspiration at susanstiffelman.com through my newsletter. And let me know what you want to hear about, what you want to talk about. You can always send an email to support at susanstiffelman.com. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for being here, listening, watching, joining. And thanks for, you know, being brave enough to want to forge your own path based on who you are and the values that you stand for and what you want to bring to your children in their lives. So remember, no matter how busy life gets, look for those moments of sweetness and joy. Take care, stay well, and I'll see you next time.